Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Saturday, Sunday, I'm sorry, Sunday, Sunday July yeah. the 3rd. I'm yeah. a day off because it's such a nice long weekend here, but it is July the 3rd, 2022. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, and I am joined by the one and only Mr. Josh Crash David who, Davis, who's a little bit, uh, I would say, white hot right now, man. You're hitting a good streak. Yeah, we um, we were we were uh, or, or I was, you know, struggling for a little bit there and it really turned it around lately. And, uh, you know, you've been doing well, too. So I just want to keep that thing rolling. And I feel like we both are confident and feeling good about our process right now, which is key. And uh, the results are starting to show. So, yeah, I, I'm excited about it. Our members are fired up. We've had some some big winners for prize picks, some takedowns. It's been fantastic. So, yeah. and of course, we've got so much uh, going on the weekends. As always, so busy. You know, we have NASCAR today. We're going to provide a, a late fourth round for the golf tournament. Of course, we've got you know the main baseball schedule. So, uh, all kinds of things happening here. We love it. We'd love to have you join us. It's dfscoachtalk.com. You can join for as little as three days for 10 bucks, or we've only got two more days today and tomorrow that we're offering the 4th of July special, which you get yeah. everything we have all the way until September 2nd, and it's only 74 bucks. So it is our best offer of the year. So take advantage of that. All right, uh, we're going to dive into this sucker here because we want to cover everything uh, that we can. Uh, the only game we're not going to cover is that first game. It's an earlier game before the main slate uh, locks. But then um, the main slate itself uh, is is going to be a one thirty five start. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, one thirty five. It's nine games for FanDuel and DraftKings, and fourteen for Yahoo. So that is going to be the slate we're focusing on today. Uh, and uh, the weather looks great. We may have a spray shower in Colorado, something to watch slightly. But other than that, man, I think we're clear as a bell. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good to me, too. I love it. So <clears throat> one key slate, you got to love that. And a lot of games, got to love that. And good yeah. weather. So it sets up perfectly. All right. We're going to dive into this right now. Miami Marlins at the Washington Nationals. Total is eight and a half. Uh, it's again that 135 game, nice 83 degrees in Washington, slight breeze blowing in from left center, 4.52 implied for the Marlins, 3.98 implied for the Nationals. Pablo Lopez and his 9.3K on the Hill, DraftKings pricing, by the way, and uh, Eric Fetty, 6.5K. So a good game to start right out of the shoot. Game two, 135, something you may know a little bit about here. Milwaukee Brewers at Pittsburgh Pirates. It's been an interesting series so far. Mm -hmm. And again, 84 degrees, slight breeze blowing out to right center, five miles an hour, so not much, but warm still. Seven and a half the total in this game is all, much lower than some of these mm -hmm. uh, nine and a half that we've been seeing Brewers Pirates. Uh, it's only a 4.35 implied for the Brewers and a scant 3.15 implied for the Pirates. Brandon Woodruff and his 9.5K against the lefty Jose Quintana and his 6.6K. I know you've got a comment on the Brewers. Well, I will say for one thing, um, it's actually going to be Zach Thompson starting for the Pirates. They announced that yesterday. Oh, They're okay. They, they scratched out. Quintana? Yeah, Quintana was scratched. So it's going to be Zach Thompson. Um, oh, I person. see that now. Yep. The other site yeah. didn't update. I'm sorry about that. Three and five with the 447, and he's a righty. So yep. a little bit different. He's a righty. Yeah, Yelich, Yelich uh, hit a grand slam against him the last time they faced him. So oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm sure he's excited to face him right out of the shoot off. The yeah, first especially after, after <laughs> we came through yesterday as my home run call. So I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, our home run calls and BVP guys have been going berserk lately. We need. Oh to yeah, keep... we had we had. Um, was it Tim? 
who was it that had that that uh, parlay on on dra- on a uh, fantasy? Yes, Fandle, it was Fandle, uh, sports book. Yeah, two out of two, and he won like four hundred eighty bucks or something. So yeah, was, yes, yeah. Hats off, man! I'll tell you, that's not a bad plan. Listen to the the uh, yeah, you know, podcast and take those guys mm-hmm. that we're highlighting because they have been scorching, no exactly. doubt. Yep, and then Walker. Uh, got it done for us too it was massive yesterday so yeah all right we have uh, a game starting two minutes later i always love these one weird games 137 exactly it's tampa bay at toronto it's uh eight and a half total shane bat is it baz or boz i believe it's boz okay i'll i'll call him boz then shane boz uh is pitching 7.9k ross stripling at 5.3 uh, peanuts for Mr. Stripling. Four mm-hmm. implied for Tampa, four and a half implied for the Toronto Blue Jays. So fun game here too uh, in Toronto. I think the roof will be open, which usually means the ball flies a little bit better for sure than when it's closed. Yeah. 140, Texas Rangers, mm-hmm. New York Mets, eight total here. Nice 84 degrees, slight breeze blowing left to right. Uh, you've got a three and a half implied total for Texas, four and a half implied for the Mets. John Gray and his 8.1K salary against Carlos Carrasco, mm-hmm. 7.6. One yeah. four. Go ahead. I was going to say, Carrasco's really been struggling lately. So I, I kind of lean on the Texas side of that matchup a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think and Gray's uh, been pitching pretty well, too. So. Yeah, it should be a good game. I think it'll be a competitive game. Uh, 140 is the Atlanta Braves, Cincinnati Reds, uh, playing in that band box in Cincinnati. Totals nine. uh, Hardly any breeze to talk of, but it is a warm 87 in Cincinnati. And uh, with that nine total, you've got five implied for Atlanta, four implied for Cincinnati. Uh, Decent pitching matchup, too. Charlie Morton, nine and six. Against Luis Castillo at eight and seven, so or eight point seven. So you've mm-hmm. got two, uh, you know, veteran pitchers that have been around the block here, pitching in a tough ballpark, warm temperatures, and both teams hitting a little bit. Yep. New York Yankees, Cleveland Guardians, one forty eight total, four point four six implied for the Yankees, three point five four for the Cleveland Guardians. Uh, 10 mile an hour wind blowing in from center, warm 80 degrees in Cleveland. Uh, you've got Jordan Montgomery, the lefty, at 8.2K going against Cleveland's Tristan McKenzie, who gave up a boatload of home runs last out, but he's mm-hmm. 8.5K, still expensive yeah. though. I don't yeah. under, quite understand that price. Do you? Yeah, I don't either, especially up against the Yankees. Uh, yeah. He's allowed the fourth most home runs this year. So. I mean, yeah, I yeah. I can't imagine anybody rostering Tristan McKenzie at 8.5K against the Yankees. Good oh, Lord. No. Now he's going to have a no-hitter, Coach. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. Baltimore Orioles, Minnesota Twins at 210. Uh, <clears throat> beautiful weather in Minnesota, 83, just a breeze. Uh, and it's a nine total, four implied for Baltimore, five implied for Minnesota, Tyler Wells and the cheap 5.7 and Devin Smeltzer and the cheap 6K. So two value pitchers here Mm -hmm. uh, in a game in Minnesota here. This should be interesting as well. Yeah. Smeltzer's been pretty good his last couple starts too. Yeah, he has. He's starting to to get uh, get in a groove. All right, 210. We got the game in the Dome in Houston. I uh, doubt that they'll open it because it's super hot down there. Right. Angels, Astros, eight is the total. Three implied is all for the Angels. Mm. Uh, five for the Astros. So Astros expected to blow out the Angels today. Uh, yeah. Jose Suarez, 7K. Fromber Valdez, 9.1K. And we know what Valdez uh, has done lately. Yeah. Yeah, and the Angels have been striking out like nobody's business lately, or they, pretty much they all year. A, so, yeah, they have a ton up and down that lineup, no doubt. Like almost forty percent strikeout rate lately. It's pretty insane. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, we've got uh, the Boston Red Sox and Chicago Cubs at 220. It's an eight and a half total. Uh, not really comfortable 75 degrees in Chicago. Great day for baseball there. All sunshine, slight breeze. 4.38 implied for the Red Sox, 4.12 for the Cubs. Connor Siebold versus Keegan Thompson, uh, 5K and 6.8K respectively. Two youngsters. Yep. 310, the only game we have to watch for a stray shower, but I'm mm -hmm. not stressing it. It's Arizona at Colorado, 91 degrees expected at game time in, in Coors Field. So is this going to be everybody in the world stacking this game uh, or not is going to be the question. Vegas thinks so, 11 and a half the total. And you got the two highest implied totals on the whole slate in this game, 5.88 for Arizona and 5.62 for Colorado. And these are two teams that aren't exactly great hitting squads either. Yeah. And then, so it's Zach Gallon versus Chad Cool in this game that's supposed to yield a lot of runs. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think I like Colorado a little bit in this matchup. Gallon's, you know, he struggled a little bit in his last few starts. And um, they have some bats, primarily like Blackman, um, and I think the other one was Iglesias or Crone or something. I don't remember, but um, that have given him quite a bit of trouble. So I lean towards yeah. Colorado in that matchup. Yeah, I, I sort of like both sides. I mean, I don't know how you really can completely avoid that game. It just statistically, it just looks like it's going to be the highest scoring game, period. Yeah. Yeah, they're not on the uh, the main slate or whatever on FanDuel. I don't know if they are on DraftKings either, are they? Um, you know what? I I can look real quick. Like I said, there's only nine games on the DraftKings and nine on FanDuel. No, Colorado's not on DraftKings main and slate. And they're not on FanDuel either because they're okay. on the single game, so I'm assuming they're on the showdown slate on DraftKings. Right, but let's see if they're on... Um, they are on that slate that we're providing for on Yahoo, the 14 game. Yeah, they are. So you can grab some Coors Field uh, for sure on, mm -hmm. on Yahoo. All right, uh, we go to the next one, 405. It is the White Sox and Giants. Um, eight implied, four for each side here. So gridlock here in San Fran. Again, we've got that stupid wind blowing out to left and left uh, center and left center. But you know what? It's the way that I read a bunch, a bunch about it because I was like, wait a minute here. Something doesn't make sense. These winds aren't affecting anything. Right. I saw a ball smashed to center and it didn't carry out with a 20 mile an hour wind. I said, OK. And mm -hmm. they've designed that stadium. And it may be not news to most people. But that the way when the wind comes in off the bay and that cold weather wind, mm -hmm. the way it swirls in that stadium, it basically takes it, brings it in, goes to bring it back out. And the way it's designed, the wind flow swirls it back in from center That's and wild. right center. So yeah. even though you see those winds, they're generally going to knock the ball down. I mean, it is it's arguably the best pitching park in baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, Really, I mean, you see guys' numbers always improve there, it seems like, for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's only supposed to be 54 degrees at wow. uh, at game time. So four implied for both sides, Lu Lucas Giolito versus John Brebbia uh, going in this one uh, for the Giants. So interesting matchup, but uh, pretty low total and cold, colder temperatures there. Yeah, that's real cold for July. I mean, it is 54 degrees. Jeez. I know it. And it's middle of the day, no less. Yeah, exactly. 410 Eastern San Diego Padres, LA Dodgers. Very low total here, guys. Seven and a half total. Uh, Mackenzie Gore lefty, Clayton Cor uh, Kershaw lefty. So mm -hmm. one of the batons that Kershaw passes off, Gore's definitely one of the kind of guys that could take it because he's got that kind of potential as a lefty. Yeah. He's got a lot of things to work through, but he certainly has that possibility. 
No wind to speak of at all. Nice balmy 79 in LA. Uh, you know, three implied basically for San Diego and four and a half for LA. So it's interesting. Really That's a, fun to I walk. know the Dodgers have never seen him before, so it'll be interesting to see how they adjust to his pitches. Yeah, it, it will. Um, then we have one game left on uh, the afternoon. Then there's the evening game that we'll talk about anyway, because I, I believe it's on that Yahoo slate. It's uh, the four ten games, Oakland, Seattle, Frankie Montas versus Robbie Ray. Um, it's only seven. So it's mm. really down there. Crash. Yeah. Uh, th three for Oakland, four for Seattle. Montas is 8.3 K. Robbie Ray, 9.3 K. So um, any thoughts on that one at all? Yeah, Ramon Laureano, your guy, um, he has, let's see, four of five with a home run, a single, a double. So he's 800 in a small sample size and five at bats. But I play that dude all the time, too. I just love that guy. Yeah, he's a good matchup for Robbie Ray. I, I faded him the other day because he was playing against my pitcher, and, of course, he crashes a three-run homer. Right. <laughs> but it's all right. And then I'll, we'll go over this last game because it is on that Yahoo slate that we're covering, 14-gamer. Uh, and it is the evening game at 7.08 Eastern, St. Louis Cardinals, Philadelphia Phillies. Seven and a half is the total. Three and a half for St. Louis, four for Philly implied. Adam Wainwright versus Zach Wheeler. That's a fun mm -hmm. one. Yeah, that should be a really good pitching matchup. Yeah, nice little fireworks game there. That should be a good one. So sure. that, that's the lay of the land. Uh, what we're going to do today then, as we uh, always do, we're going to check out pay up, uh, value, fade pitchers, BVPHR stacks. We'll give you a couple of prize picks plays each. Then we'll supply some more uh, prize picks plays for our members in Discord. And then we're going to build a, another two brains or better than one uh, GPP for FanDuel. So we'll build that right out here. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get this posted so everybody has a chance to listen before uh, these early slates start. All right. Again, if you're watching right now on YouTube, hit that thumbs up. We really appreciate that. It helps us move up the algorithm. So take a second and do that now. Also hit the subscribe button and the little alarm in the corner that will alert you every time one of our podcasts posts. If you're listening on any of our audio podcast landing spots like Spotify or Apple Podcasts, take a second, give us a top rating, a five star, and a quick comment, and you'll get in our monthly drawing for a free month of Coach Talk, and Colin pulls that at the end of every month. So Got a little bit of time here in July uh, to get some attempts in for that. Um, also, if you want to join us, it's dfscoachtalk.com. If you want to just try us out, do it for two, three days. Uh, Three-day pass is only uh, 10 bucks, but we only have two days left if you want to take advantage of that 4th of July special that gets you everything we have, which is MMA, NASCAR, tons and tons of baseball. Mm -hmm. All of the NBA Summer League games that have a contest, we're going to have on there. Really excited for that. We've just hammered that the last couple of years. Um, and then uh, everything else that's going on, uh, we will be uh, on top of that. And you get that uh, membership through September 2nd, uh, mm -hmm. right as football's on the doorstep. So you want to give that a look for sure. For sure. All right, sir. This is what people are listening for. Um, and it's our pay up pitchers. How about that? Yeah. So for me, I like Brandon Woodruff. He's 10,000 on FanDuel. He's 9,500 on DraftKings going up against the Pirates. Um, he faced them in April. He pitched six shutout innings, had nine strikeouts for 55 fantasy points. Um, he looked really sharp in his last start, which was his return from his injury. He pitched five innings, struck out 10 only allowed one run on two hits for 48 fantasy points against Tampa. Um, Vogelback's the only pirate in their projected lineup that has faced him before that has over a 300 batting average against him. Uh, Reynolds is only one for 11. And lefties are only 185 against Woodruff. So 
if they try to load up on you know lefties like they did against Adrian Hauser, I think it's going to possibly backfire and they won't have as much success. So I like Brandon Woodruff here. Um, really looked good to me in his last start against Tampa. So I think he'll keep it rolling here today. Very good. I'm going to go with Pablo Lopez and a little okay. bit different selection for me. I really like him though. I mean, he, he gets to uh, go against Washington. His last start against them, he had 46 fantasy points. Mm-hmm. He's sharp, man. I know he can be inconsistent and he's up and down a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the game before last, he had 49 against Colorado. He's thrown some really good games on the board throughout the season 55 against Milwaukee, 37 at Colorado, which is a tough feat. Uh, you know, that 46 against Washington, he only allowed three hits, no runs, struck out six. Now, his strikeouts haven't been that 10 11 mark that we have right. been seeing for a while but you can almost book it that he's going to get you like six seven and he usually goes deep i mean he's got start after start over here seven innings six innings seven seven eight innings so mm-hmm. he's going to get you your money's worth i really like him in this start washington has so many holes in that offense they and do a lot of they don't strike out as much as you would think with with so many weak hitters, but they hit super low percentage. So uh, I feel really good that uh, this is going to be one of those Lopez games where he's dealing and going. So a little bit contrarian. He's not going to be one of the highest owned pitchers, but he's, his price is very fair. It's almost value ish on, on uh, DraftKings. He's Mm 9,300. He's a fair 9,900 on, uh, FanDuel, and then he's a giveaway price. They're only 37 bucks. That's a wow. nice price yeah, on Yahoo. Yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't understand how mm-hmm. he's like the 11th pitcher price wise. It made no sense. Yeah. So I felt real good. I feel good about Pablo today. I think he's going to step up. Okay. Uh, my value pitcher is going to be from Valdez. Now on FanDuel, he's the most expensive pitcher, but he's 9,100 on DraftKings. Oh, I like that price. Uh, going up against the Angels, who I mentioned earlier, they have the highest strikeout rate this year. They had 14 strikeouts against Christian Javier and eight last night against Jose Urquidy, who's yeah. not really a big strikeout pitcher normally. So um, I think that that's a favorable matchup for him. Uh, Mike Trout's 0 for 9, and Otani is 2 for 20 against him. So Amazing. Um, if he can avoid giving up the home runs to those two and get a decent number of strikeouts in their last three games, the angels have a 40.9% K rate. Um, I, I think that he can be a strong candidate to be a top pitcher on the slate. So. Yeah. I think it's a great pick. I think he's going to be chalk. I think yeah, he's going to be the highest owned pitcher on the slate. Yeah, he probably will be. I really do. And I think deservedly. So, I mean, LA yeah. strikes out like ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I'm with you there. Uh, I like Fromber Valdez, certainly not fading him, not going to play any angels. And I will have a, a couple of lineups today mm-hmm. and Valdez will definitely make uh, the one because he's underpriced on DraftKings for sure. Yeah, 9,100. Yeah. So I'll play him there, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I'm not going to play him on all the sites where he's priced differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of that's also going to be, because of leverage. I just yeah. think, you know, you're going to have just ridiculous ownership there. So uh, I'm going to pick and choose my spots for him. I also like him, but just not as a hundred percent play uh, in, in all my lineups. Gotcha. The guy that I like today as my value pitcher, it's for several reasons and it's going to be a surprise for you. It's Devin Smelter. Mm, okay. I, I like, I like Smelter today. His ownership's going to be down, but he's dirt cheap. And, you know, he's a lefty against Baltimore. Right. He's four, four and one with a 286 ERA. I mean, mm. that's those are good numbers, man. His yeah. whip is 1.01. And granted, you know, he's not, again, he's not a giant strikeout pitcher. But right. guess what? He had nine the last game against Cleveland. So mm. his improvement is coming. Three of his last four games, he had a nice 28 against Tampa and then 37 and 46 against Cleveland. And that that's, those are teams that can hit. Right. Um, I just think he's coming into his own. He was a highly regarded youngster and his price on DraftKings is ridiculous. It's 6k. 
Wow. He's cheaper than a bunch of the, the hitters. Hmm. Um, he's really uh, priced great on FanDuel at 8400 mm-hmm. And he's just like Lopez on Yahoo, 37 bucks, which, again, makes no sense. But they're both super cheap. I mean, we're used to playing 50 52 bucks right. uh, on, on Yahoo for our top pitchers. So there's a lot of things I, I, I like about him. Baltimore hasn't seen him. Um, yeah. You know, Baltimore's batting 227 right handed as a team. And uh, they're also, they'll have a bunch of righties in there against the lefty mm-hmm. Smelter. Um, I just think it's, it's a really good fit. It's sneaky, it's low owned, and it's cheap. And, you know, on some of the sites like Yahoo, for example, and uh, DraftKings, if, if I go lo- uh, Lopez and Smelter, as opposed to maybe Lopez and uh, the Houston pitcher, the, uh, the, the, the savings allows me to get to all the, the cores bats that I want yeah. and some Yankee stacks. <clears throat> and I think yeah. I'm going to really try to you know, maybe where you have the potential to get 50 pitching fantasy points and I get 45, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to allow myself the chance for two or three more home runs, which we know that's going to be, you know, maybe 45 points extra right there. So right. I'm going to do a little mix and match leverage strategy today, uh, you know, with some Lopez and some Smelter. Okay. And try to steer... The, the, the chalk today is simply going to be very simple. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be the Houston pitch, pitcher and the Milwaukee pitcher. Those two mm-hmm. guys are going to get a bunch of ownership uh, and a lot of guys will just plug them in and go. Uh, so I think yeah. it might be a little bit different, a little contrarian today. I like it. Uh, so they're eighth against left handed pitchers um, as far as the lowest batting average they're 231 so yeah okay they're, they're um i have them batting 227 righty but that's neither neither here nor there 227 231 are not great right exactly that's the point it's not great either way yeah um and all right so for my fade pitcher i have charlie morton he's 9500 on fanduel 9600 on DraftKings. why do you always have to pick on poor old charlie <laughs> Fourth most expensive pitcher on FanDuel and the most expensive, surprisingly, on DraftKings. Um, he's going uh, against uh, Cincinnati. Mike Moustakis, Joey Votto, Brandon Drury, and Nick Zell have all hit near 300 or better against him. And in 11 starts in Cincinnati, he's averaged 22 fantasy points. That's FanDuel scoring. So, um, yeah, I, I like the, the matchup for Cincinnati in that small park. Uh, Spencer Strider had a really nice day against them yesterday, so I think they'll bounce back a little bit today. So Charlie Morton is going to be my fade pitcher. I like it. All right, you're going to have an absolute heart attack here. I know it. So Brandon Woodruff. Get, yeah, put the, the pill under your tongue and breathe <laughs> deeply. I'm going to fade Brandon Woodruff, and I'll, there, I have multiple reasons why. And I, I battled this all morning, kept trying to talk myself out of it. Let me ask you a couple of questions. You're the Milwaukee Brewer special. And, and mm-hmm. again, I'm not trying to trash your pay up pitcher because he could easily lead this slate in, in pitching scoring. I think he, like I say, I think you're going to see Milwaukee, Houston, uh, all over the pitching uh, lineups today. Yeah. All right. Do you know how many starts Woodruff has this year? Take a stab. Nine. He has 10. So great start. How many of those 10 starts has he pitched over six innings? Take a stab. Four. Zero. That's the reason I'm not going with him. They are protecting him. He's been unhealthy at times. He's pitched five, four, six, five, four and a third, five and two thirds, four, six, four, and three and two thirds. Those are his 10 starts this year. So, To get a deep start from him, Mm -hmm. only a second one back coming back from injury. I know he can strike a lot of guys out. He struck out 10 against Tampa. They strike out a a ton. Way back in uh, uh, May, he struck out 12 against Cincinnati. Okay, so those are great. But all those other starts, he's not pitching deep ever. He had four, six, five, six. 
two two five. So I just for the money, he's nine five on fan uh, DraftKings, mm-hmm. ten on FanDuel, and forty eight big bucks on Yahoo. So he's expensive. Yeah, I I can't imagine you're going to get <clears throat> anything over six since he hasn't done that once all year. Right. And even though the Pirates are young, they have a bunch of strikeouts. They're scrappy. They're playing sort of fired up ball. They got a lot of these young, talented guys that are probably should still be in double and triple A. Mm-hmm. And so, again, I'm not trashing Woodruff. I'm not going to stack Pirates, but I'm going to fade Woodruff just because of the depth of the innings that he's not been able to complete this year and okay. the fact that it's warm, really warm in Pittsburgh. And even though they're not good, you know, these these young guys, this Bly Madrid, Madrid that's hitting third, you know, O'Neill Cruz, Sawinski, uh, all these youngsters that they have mm-hmm. are scrappy. And yeah. so that's I want to give you the long winded version because I wanted to give your blood pressure a chance to go down. <laughs> no, I, I get that. I do. Uh, and Woodruff has, you know, he's he struggled at times this year, too. So um after a big game like he had last game, maybe he comes back to earth a little bit today. We'll, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, I don't think he gets blown up. Trust me. It's just when you look at these leverage numbers, yeah. you know, if, if I can find a way, and that's what, I'm try, what I've am try, what i tried to do today. And, you know, it could bite me in the you-know-what. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm going to give it a shot because I think you're going to see – because you're going to really have to find a way to get different with your hitting if, if you do what everybody else is going to do. Yeah, and that's gonna that's gonna be you know plug in Brandon Woodruff and plug mm-hmm. in um, who's the Houston pitcher? I keep forgetting this. Framber Valdez. Valdez. You yeah. plug those two guys in. They're expensive, and now you're gonna have to find somewhere to get different. If you if you can shift off to one of those two guys, or for me, probably both, which is, seems mm-hmm. risky for a cash player, <laughs> but. You know what? If I can get two guys like a Smelter Lopez, guys like that, that can get within five to eight points of their score, and mm-hmm. then compare your hitting to my hitting, not you in particular, just right, right, you right, out there, right. yeah. And you see three Dodgers, and you see you know three Diamondbacks and three Rockies, whatever, yeah. or three, three, two, something of that nature. I think I'm going to have an edge there. So that's. A little bit different strategy today, but I, I feel like yeah, I'm on to something. That's interesting. It's very interesting uh, because I actually don't like Pablo Lopez that much this, today. So I don't think a lot of people wear. I, I'm, I'm going to be – it's going to be pretty simple for me. I don't think there's going to be any in between. I'm either going to look really smart and be up, up there real high or I'm going to be like dead last. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a risk-reward t- today uh, for me, even as a cash player. I'm going to roll it. Roll it out there a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about it before. Sundays can be really strange. So anyway. That's the other thing that yeah. I know. I don't know if it's because it's all the early games. You know, people don't have the right catcher in there a lot of times on mm-hmm. Sundays. That screws up teams. But yeah. m- m- Sundays seem to be the quirkiest day of the week. They do. They do. Yeah, And they rest some guys sometimes on Sundays in their lineups, and it just gets kind of weird. So, yeah, I definitely yep. understand that. All right, Chief, what do you have for BVP? Just like I was talking about, I've got Juan Soto. He's 3,800 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DraftKings, 348 with eight hits and 23 at bats. He's hit three singles, three doubles, and two home runs, and he's on an eight game hitting streak. So, Juan Soto is I, I think he BVP. walks. I think he walks two or three times to, today. So, I think you can get some points with him, but I don't mm-hmm. think Lopez challenges him. He's the only guy on the team, really. I'm not afraid of Nelson Cruz anymore. So yeah. go ahead and play your Nelson Cruz home runs today. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just not my home run call. Yeah. He's yeah, not my I think he pitches. Is that your home run call? No, I say he's not my home run call. Oh, okay. No. Good. Thank God. And I really feel bad then. <laughs> um yeah. yeah, I just I think you pitch around him. I don't know why teams would challenge him at this point because mm-hmm. he's just such a, a one man show there anymore. And do you see that he passed up all that money? Yeah, I did see that. He's and he's uh he's out of there, I think. <laughs> did, well, I mean, he what was it like 350 million or something? 
I think so. Yeah, it's, it's something like beyond logic. I mean, how you pass that up, you have to be out of your mind. But yeah. he wants out, and that's the other reason that I'm going to be – you're going to see me picking on Washington the next couple of weeks because mm -hmm. I think they're in disarray. You've got their youngsters now looking, saying, okay, we have our leader, Soto, that we're building the franchise around. He isn't going to play here. He's leaving. There's, yeah. There's never been a player that that declines a three hundred and fifty million dollar whatever it was. Thirteen year deal for three hundred and fifty million dollars. So they definitely planned on locking him up for the rest of his career. And he said no. Mm -hmm. So that's a billion percent. He's out of there, and that just jacks up the whole. Oh yeah, they're franchise. they're. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Goodness gracious! In disarray. Yeah. Um. I can't think of it right now, but uh, anyway. And I love Cruz because I watched him play, hit a bunch of home runs for the Rangers through the years, but he's older than me, dude. I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I just, I think Washington's going to be in a free fall. They're 29 and 51 now, so they mm -hmm. do stink anyway. But right. uh, anyway, just, you know, trying to look in, by, you know, behind the scenes. The, the things that Coach Talk that we like to look at, that aren't just the stats that are spit out by, you know, a, an optimizer. We, we do, of course, we look at all of that stuff and it's all important statistical, but sometimes you got to measure some other things. And the, the state of that franchise right now is in disarray. That's all mm -hmm. you can say. I mean, yeah, their morale is the word I was looking for. Yeah. Morale, morale is, is shot. shot right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm with you. All right. My BVP play is Jared Walsh from the LA Angels Angels. So if I'm going against Valdez, I'm not going to stack against him again. He could he I'm telling you right now even though I'm not playing him Valdez and your your Brewers dude could both be right up there. But mm -hmm. Walsh, you know, he's he's batting 400 against him. He's taken yep. deep. He's walked against him. 1217 OPS. And you know, I think you're going to have so much ownership on Houston that these Angels guys even though they don't have great numbers, some of them against Valdez, but Walsh is does. I mm -hmm. think you're going to have m way under own Angels bats, and at yeah. times they crush your spirit, but at times they throw some home runs together. So, mm -hmm. another underdog choice here, Jared Walsh for my uh, BVP. I like it. Home run. Home run call. A little bit different again. I guess it was a little bit different yesterday too with with Yelich. I don't think a lot of people were on him. Um, yeah. Ian Happ, 364 with four hits and 11 at bats against Michael Waka. Now his four hits, he has three home runs and nice. six of his eight home runs have been against right-handed pitchers. He actually hasn't hit a home run at Wrigley Field since June 2nd, so over a month uh, since wow. he was at home. So I like him to go deep today. That's a surprise stat mm -hmm. right there. He's only hit three at home all year of his eight. That's so, crazy. Yeah. I'm going to go with Teoscar Hernandez. They, they've they got a nice, you know, batting order right now that's hot. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's batting right between the, the incredible Alejandro Kirk, the surprise of the season to me. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's awesome. batting cleanup with all those huge batters around him. But Hernandez, again, this can't even be considered. That's why I didn't do it. BVP. I did HR call. He's only right. faced him twice, but one of them was a home run. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I just think sandwiched in between Kirk and Guriel. Guriel's hit a home run off him as well. Yeah. Boz is a youngster. He hasn't faced anybody that much, but mm -hmm. he's got to go in there into Toronto with that roof open, the ball flying. Their big uh, Canada day celebration was, uh, Two days ago, Friday the 1st, they're still having all fireworks and doing all their stuff. Just think it's going to be a fired up, huge crowd. They had pretty much sold out all the games all weekend. And I like I like the feel in this game. I like Toronto Bats today, and I mm -hmm. like Tay Oscar to go deep. Yeah, I like it. All right, sir. What are the stacks? Those are always so key to winning or losing. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Uh, we've mentioned a couple of them, maybe even all of them throughout the course of this podcast so far. But um, Houston's my top stack against Jose Suarez. I think that's okay. a really good, good matchup for them. 
Um, the Yankees, as we've mentioned, Tristan McKenzie has been allowing a lot of home runs. So I like them. Yep. And uh, I like Toronto, as you mentioned, against Boz. And then uh, I like the Reds actually as a GPP stack against Charlie Morton. So interesting. Yeah. You'll get low ownership on a lot of those guys, but yeah, it's hot and it's in that small park. So you never know. Right. And then the Brewers, as I mentioned, um, yellow to a grand slam against Zach Thompson, and he allowed uh, six runs and in four innings, and that started in Milwaukee. So I think they have a favorable matchup there. I like Rowdy Tellez a lot today. Excellent. Um, I've, you know, I've been so incredibly a contrarian this whole show so far, but I'm not with my stacks. Mm-hmm. That's where my money's going to be spent today. I'm going to have Yankees. I'm going to have Blue Jays. Yeah, and then I'm gonna have the the cores game, both Arizona and Colorado. Those are gonna be the teams I probably have all of my hitters from those four right. teams today mm-hmm. because of the ability to get there with the cheaper pitching. And I'm looking for multiple home runs. My Daryl Strawberry GIF that I put in our uh, Discord all day long. I expect to wear that sucker out. I may even have to go to a <laughs> secondary home run. Uh, look i'm not sure because i'm expecting to hit that many yeah that sounds awesome all right two things to go stick with us here we got prize picks we're going to give you our top two plays right now and then we are definitely going to go through a fan duel gpp build where we have two completely opposite this is the least we've ever been similar we have opposite builds so maybe with our this is a true two brains are better than one Two different ways to attack the slate. We put it together. Together, maybe that's the winner. Mm-hmm. And yeah, maybe so. That would so, be what cool. is your top prize picks today, uh, Crash? Uh, I do like Ian Happ um, over six and a half fantasy score. As I mentioned, he's going to be my home run call, uh, but I think he can get there a lot of ways. So, I like over six and a half. It's not too high. I like it. I am going to go Pablo Lopez over 17 and a half pitching outs. Mm. I I think he gets six innings in against this Washington team. I usually sneeze twice, so there may be another one coming. Yeah. Uh, But I I just like that even better than the fantasy score. I just, I think he gets, he's a a bulldog for them. And I think he gets through six. I like that. Yep. My other top play is going to be Frommer Valdez over six strikeouts. Um, his last five starts, he's averaged right at six strikeouts. Yeah. But this is a favorable matchup, obviously, the most strike heavy strikeout team in the league right now. Uh, so I think he'll get probably I think he'll get eight is what I think he'll get. So nice. Yeah, he's I mean, a guy that's been striking people out against a strikeout team. That's why I think he's gonna be just dead ass chalk. I really yeah, he do. probably will be. Yeah, I would think he is the most expensive play. on Fanduel, but yeah. yeah. Well, he deserves to be. You know, he yeah. really does. He does. Um, I want to. I want to go to Teoscar Hernandez over fantasy points, but they moved him, and I'm trying to find him here. Um, they updated they him from before. What's that? What did they move to his line? Uh, I'm they I had him called up on here, and then you know how they add players, and then your guy gets thrown to a different spot on the screen. Yeah, he's out, he's out of the thing. I don't even see him on here. Yeah, he's not, he's not on. All right, so let's you might get put into your um home runs or whatever. You know how they have like three guys for a home run, he might be, yeah. Well, keep an eye on Teoscar Hernandez for um, pitcher fan or hitter fantasy score. If they do add him, yeah, uh, I'd like to add him to the mix. I'm gonna go. I'll go with Vlad Guerrero for my pick here, so everybody has that. Even though it's eight and a half, again, I expect mm-hmm. them to score a bunch of runs today. I think he'll be right in the thick of that with the ball hopefully uh, flying out there at Blue Jays Stadium. So, Vlad, over eight and a half fantasy score is uh, my hitting. What was your other one, Pablo Lopez? or Pablo Lopez over... Um, 34? 
Is that right? 34 no, and a half? it wasn't fantasy score. It's oh. over uh, uh, pitching outs, 17 and a half. Okay. Yeah. Over pitching outs. I yeah. like your play, actually. Um, okay. All right. So. What I was gonna say is, yeah, if they do that that home run thing with with Hernandez, you could have like uh, Hernandez, Springer, and Guerrero or something. I'd, over I'd, love, I'd take that runs. in a heartbeat. So yeah. keep checking those; they're gonna, you know, change and update as as the morning goes on for sure. Yeah. All right. So the big question is, how are we gonna come to any grips on picking a pitcher since we're like fading the other guy's pitcher? So. Mm -hmm. Um. It is a GPP, so I'm not gonna have you force you to take Lopez. You don't like him. Um, Smelter's out there. I don't want Woodruff. I mean, I guess we could go Valdez. It, just in the fact that we're somewhat contrarian. I don't dislike Valdez. I do think that Walsh is going to homer off of him, though. Yeah, Unless you have a better idea. What do you think? Are you there? Am I crazy here? What do you think what? about John Gray? John Gray? Uh, Look at his last five starts. John Gray. Yeah. All right. I mean, since we disagree on all the other ones, let's go. Yeah, we with disagree the... on everything almost. So let's. I know. Let's go completely off the board. <laughs> Yeah, why not? I mean, that's part of it. Now we can all filter in the hitters we like here, but we'll go John Gray, 9,200. Why not? Let me look at something real quick, Coach. I'm fine with it. I'm just going to look up and see what his numbers. I just were looking at him. I mean, he has been hot. Um, well, I was going to say against the Mets, though. Um, yeah, I mean, there's only one guy, and he only has one at bat, and that's Mark Canyon. Right. He hasn't yeah. faced him. And eight strikeouts, five, six, ten, three, and twelve. So I mean he's striking. He'll be low on out. too. Yeah, he'll be low on. All right. That's gonna be off the radar, but I'll take that John is, Gray. Hey, you know what? The funny part is the only lineup we'll probably each have John Gray on is in this. is this one. <laughs> <laughs> but why yeah. not? Maybe it's takedown day for us, right? Yeah, why not? All right. Um, I don't know whose pick that was, so it doesn't that really matter. I'm gonna that go to mine. Jared Walsh, twenty eight hundred bucks. Catcher, first base. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna go cheap as well. As McCormick, twenty five hundred in the outfield. Chaz McCormick. Okay. I like he should it. Be, of the Astros, he should be one of the lower owned ones, I would think. So, yeah. Um, Teoscar Hernandez, 3,200 outfield. Okay. Let's see. No Arizona Colorado game here either. So, no, it's true. That changes things for sure. Oh, I got to go with my guy, home run call at 3,100 outfield. Who's that? Hap, Ian Hap. Ian Hap. All right. How are we doing salary wise? Thirty-five fifty. That's good. Yeah, we're we're ri we got cash to spend today. Mm -hmm. I am gonna go to the man, <clears throat> the myth, the legend, Aaron Judge. Utility. Okay. I like Judge today too. Um, which lately he's been better for me. So hopefully that continues. Yeah. I think you broke that bad string you had with him. I hope so. My God. I'm going to go to the guy that you went to yesterday that let us down. Um, I think that we may have been a day early on him and that's Jonathan India. Yeah. I don't, man, I'm starting to lose faith, man. In him. He needs to turn it around. 
Today would be a good day. I would hope so. DJ LeMayhew, 3,300 third base Yankees. Okay. Gives you 4,100 bananas for, and there's nobody you can, there's no one priced higher than that. So you have your choice of all the shot shortstops in Major League Baseball today that are playing on this slate. So you have at here. least 25 fantasy points from this guy. At least. I bet you're going to take Willie Adamas. I thought about it, but I don't think so. Um, Bo Bichette? Hmm, let's see. I think I'm going to take uh, – let's see. No pressure. 25 is the floor for whoever you pick. <laughs> Don't think about it too hard. I'm not. I'm just looking at the board. Um Real quick here. We can't take Francisco Lindor, not with John Gray as our man. No, I know I'm not taking him. I don't know how much that leaves us with. 1,200. Wow. So I took a Med Rosario. Um, Maybe you want to go up from McCormick then. Yeah. Because yeah, you could go, go up to 37 if you if you scoop McCormick out of there. Yeah, I can. Um, that gives I'll, take of Yelich. I'll take Yelich. I'll go back to him. He's on like 11 game hitting streak anyway. So He is. Okay, so that's it. We've got John Gray, Jared Walsh, Jonathan India, DJ LeMayhew, Ahmed Rosario, Teoscar Hernandez, Christian Yelich, Ian Happ, and Aaron Judge for the two brains are better than one. FanDuel GPP play of the day. Nice. We've only got one, even it's a, it's a mini stack at that, but Yankees, two Yankees. Uh, we have two, Judge and LeMayhew. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm saying we only have one, like, stack or whatever. Oh, you know, right, right, mini right. mini stack at that, too, just a two-man stack. Yeah, it's, it's okay. definitely a GPP. This lineup will not be duped very much, that mm -hmm. much I can tell you. <laughs> this will definitely not be duped. Yeah. No. So it's a wild day, but it's Sunday. So hopefully uh, everybody takes advantage of that. So fantastic crash. I will uh, let's wrap this sucker up so we can get this posted for everybody. They have plenty of time to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Again, we'd love to have you DFS coach talk.com. Just go there, check us out, sign up for that three day to dip your toes in or take advantage of that super 4th of July special. Uh, also, prize picks. You can always go to prizepicks.com. We've had some monster winners in our Discord yes, lately. Yeah. yeah, if it's the first time you've uh, deposited there, you <laughs> use the promo code Coach Talk, all one word, no space. They will match you dollar for dollar on your first hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. All right, my friend, uh, check us out on Twitter throughout the day at DFS Coach Talk. And Colin will be updating everything if there are any changes. To our two brains lineup, it will post in uh, on Twitter, so you'll be able to see it there. Uh, both Crash and I are on there. We'll be retweeting that if you follow us. He is at JP Davis 1982, and I am at Joe Sarvati. That's J O E S A R V A D I. All right, Crash. Any final words, my friend? No, no. I'm just uh, excited to see what's going to happen with this two brains lineup. It's probably the most uh, contrarian we've ever been. So I know I'm excited about it as well. And it, Hey, it should play into the craziness of Sundays. So hopefully exactly. it works out great, but, yeah. uh, we'll be back tomorrow too, for the big 4th of July special, uh, great, uh, slate tomorrow, lots yeah. of games throughout. So we'll be back for that one for sure. And we definitely will be looking to crush it in MLB DFS and prize picks.